welcome back to our wiring video part two. Today we're going to put power in the car and we're going to see what works and what doesn't. So let's get to it. So the only thing left I can do now is put power to the car. I never had power to the car harness. Um, so in the car I got Frankie, he's got the fire extinguisher. And another thing I noticed is someone was in here cutting wires. I don't know what they were for, so we'll see what happens with that. So in the front of the car I don't have a dedicated battery yet. I just have this jumper box and both terminals are already set up to go in here. Um, the only thing I need to do is just turn this on switch on and that'll do it. So we got light. Let's see how that's going in here. Ah, oh, sh <laughs> Come on, man. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. I guess I just got pranked by my 11 year old and nothing's Nothing's burned up in there. Okay, we got the engine harness completely put in the car. And this is going to be the first time after splicing all these mil spec connectors in, I put power to the actual computer. So the yellow is the ACC, the red is the constant power. So we're just going to connect them both at the same time. If it goes well, we're going to hear those relays click over and that computer accept some power. And there we go. Already showing a check engine light, but nothing smoking. Now the whole point of this is to see if the throttle pedal works. So we'll turn you around. Okay, here's the throttle pedal. Let's see if we hear the actual throttle body opening. opening and closing. Looking pretty good. Okay, I somehow managed to jam myself under the steering column of this MR2. So I got my test light and I'm going to try and find out which one of these contacts from this ignition module is going to give me the starter wire. So this one here is constant power. I got nothing. I got nothing. So I'm going to turn the key. We're going to hear something. There's power going on. So this is my ACC accessory power. I'm going to need that for my LSX computer. Nothing else over here. So I'm assuming when I crank this one more time, I'm going to get power from it. So let's give it a turn and see if it lights up. There we go. So that's my ignition wire. I'm going to take this apart so I can better look at it now. So this is the ignition wiring taken out of the car. And from what you could see where I mentioned earlier, this black wire that I've marked, it comes off the starter wire, so this is going to need to go to the starter relay. And this is the ACC, so when I turn the key to the ignition, it's going to send power out here. It's also feeding the rest of the car to the dashboard and everything. So I'm going to have to splice into this to get my power to go back to the LSX computer. And this black wire, I no longer want going through the circuitry of the MR2. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to pick it out of the actual plug. I'm going to wire it back to the starter relay. All right, so to further look at the starter relay that we're going to use. So this is just a wiring bus that it comes with. This is the other part of the relay. And these, the inside of this relay is marked. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. So the top one, 87, is going to go to the battery positive. The bottom is going to be marked number 30. This is going to go to power to the actual terminal on a solenoid on the starter. The right one, number 85, is going to be ground. And the number 86 on this is the original ignition switch wire, which is the black one I pulled off the earlier video. So I've already come around and marked it on here because it is a little confusing once you get this put in here. And then I'm going to put this back on the car, and we're going to see where how I'm going to route the wiring for it. Okay, there is the starter solenoid, just temporarily wired up, but everything's connected. And here is the ignition. So let's see if this works. All right, we got it. Now I got to come back and clean all this wiring up, and make it look good. All 
All right, now we're just going to do a simple test of the fuel pump relay, which comes from the engine harness. Now, when I turn the key, it's going to send a like three second burst to prime the fuel pump. So right now I have zero power going to this power wire leading to the fuel pump. When I turn the key, the ignition or the and the engine computer is going to prime this for about three seconds. So let's see if it works. There we go. Did what I was supposed to do. Okay, here things are just cleaned up as much as I can get them for now. So coming up with a route to run these wires going to come along the frame rail it's going to come through this cross member for the seat which still needs a grommet and they all come up to their terminations over there so cleaned up enough and the starter relay is now hidden up in there at a decent spot also and throttle is now working so just a few more things to get taken care of and we'll be back at it all right, so also I do have a question. If anyone can tell me this other wire that runs here with these purple straps around it. And I used to run to the firewall, which is about you know another 10 inches back that way. But there are some lead ends that I do understand and some that I don't know. You know these ones, this goes to like the door, this goes to the speaker. I don't care about that stuff. It's this far end of it. I know one of them was the old fuel pressure, actual fuel relay power wire, which is those blue ones. And if you look at that plug in there, additionally, there's this other one that's coiled up. And it went towards the center of the car. I never had any of that stuff. So if you do know what that is, please just drop me a comment just so I can figure this out. I'm eventually going to delete all this stuff that runs all the way towards the front of the dash. Just to make it look cleaner. So please help me out with that. And on the passenger side of the car, this is the signal wire for the cell starter solenoid. It comes out from my starter relay, which is now over there. It follows this really thick main power cable right from the battery. Now this is all running straight to the starter. And in here it is drilled through and grommeted which goes out to the other side to the starter which brings me to my next problem which I'm going to show you now. Now this is the GM starter that we heard earlier. It does work perfectly fine however it wasn't actually connected to the engine when I cranked the ignition on it. Um, the issue with it is and which I knew about I just kind of put it off is the adapter plate that I have to mount the transaxle to that engine has interference and it told me in the instructions that a good portion of this is going to have to be removed to clearance to fit inside the adapter plate. However, it rides on this shaft, um, which gives it support. So, I mean, there's only so much I can cut off of here. Um, so, I'm going to trim this down without trying not to ruin a perfectly good starter. So, let's get to that. And back under the car after we turned it. Now we got it fully bolted up. Main power wire on there and the solenoid wire all put together ready to go. Alright, so we got a lot of important things done on the wiring today. The unfortunate thing I wanted for this video was to get my tail lights working. Uh, I'm currently missing the turn signal and light switch combo that goes in the steering wheel, and without that, I can't get anything working. So I'm going to get that thing ordered up and the next light video is going to have the lights working. Additionally, if I just had some fuel line going to that engine, I bet you I could have started it today. So we'll keep cranking on that and we'll see you next time. See you.